this poem, The Solipsist, I had a part of it already, but it got finished when I found a book uh, by a philosopher who just had a completely crazy view and was arguing uh, quite literally that the world exists in your head, that is in the most physical sense, it's all really in there. So that if you started out with a space probe and you launched it from Earth and the space probe went and went and went forever, eventually it would reach the end of the universe, which of course would be the inside of your skull. <laughs> and he was so, I mean that's so wrong, <laughs> that I had to make a poem out of it and so it got into here. Uh, and in fact, the last poem in this little book, which I will also read, had takes some imagery from that as well. So this sort of bookends in that way. But this is the first one, and it's the title poem. It's called The Solipsist. Don't be misled. That sea song you hear when the shell's at your ear, it's all in your head. That primordial tide, the slurp and salt slosh of the brain's briny wash is on the inside. Truth be told, the whole place, everything that the eye can take in to the sky and beyond into space, lives inside of your skull. When you set your sad head down on Procrustes' bed, you lay down the whole universe. You recline on the pillow, the cosmos grows dim, the soft ghost in the squishy machine, which the world is, retires. Someday it will expire. Then all will go silent and dark. For the moment, however, the blackness is just temporary. The planet you carry will shortly swing back from the far nether regions. And life will continue, but only within you. Which raises a question that comes up again and again as to why God would make ear and eye to face outward not in. 